I'm Paul. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Bible. If the body you're worshiping with teaches that baptism is an outward display of an inward change, then it is not the Lord's body. If the body you're worshiping with teaches that to become a Christian, all you need to do is accept Jesus as your personal Savior, or accept Jesus into your heart, or simply say the sinner's prayer, then it is not the Lord's body. If the body you're worshiping with teaches anything contradictory to Scripture, then it is not the Lord's body. It's just another man-made denomination. The Bible teaches that baptism is for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 2.38, and this is the ESV. I'll be reading from ESV, King James, and the New King James. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, Acts 2.38, English Standard Version. The Bible teaches that baptism puts us into Christ. It's actually how we become Christians. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's Galatians 3.27 ESV. The Bible teaches that baptism washes away our sins. That's wonderful. Acts 22.16. This is the King James Version. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That is how we call on the name of the Lord, is through baptism. Again, Acts 22, 16. The Bible actually teaches, word for word, that baptism saves us. 1 Peter three twenty one. This is the ESV again. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's 1 Peter 3.21. So baptism saves us. We make an appeal to God through our baptism. We get the clear conscience, and it's through Christ, through the resurrection of Christ, through Christ's blood. That is when Christ's blood is applied is when we submit to baptism. God applies Jesus' saving blood at that moment. Our sins are then washed away. The Bible teaches that the Lord adds you to his body after you're immersed. Now that's unlike many churches, most churches, where you can join. You know, join the church of your choice, that's not in the Bible. You can't join the Lord's church that isn't his design. But I can share with you what is his design. This is the end of Acts chapter 2. We just read in Acts 2.38. Well, in Acts 2.37, after they heard the first gospel sermon preached, they asked, what should we do? What can we do? They asked an apostle directly. They asked an apostle directly, and that's when he said in Acts 2.38, repent of your sins and be immersed in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. That's when he said that. Now at the end of the chapter, that's when we hear Acts 2 and 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So they asked what they should do. They were told to be immersed for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus. That is obeying the gospel. That is how they were saved. And then the Lord himself added them to his body, to his church. Jesus built one church. Matthew chapter 16, Jesus was asking Peter who Peter thought Jesus was. Simon Peter replied, this is Matthew 16, 16 and 17. Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In Matthew 16, 18, sorry, Matthew 16, 16 and 17, the English Standard Version. The next, next verse, I've got this in the New King James Version. This is where Jesus said, And I also say to you, 
that you are Peter. And on this rock, the rock that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, this is the rock he's talking about. On this rock, I will build my church. He's building his church on the fact that he is the Son of God. Starting that verse again. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18, New King James Version. Jesus did not build all of these denominations we see today. I hear reports of 38,000 different denominations of the Christian faith. Well, the Bible reveals that there is one faith. Again, one. Ephesians 4, 5. English Standard Version. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In fact, denominations are divisions. They are divisions from the original church that Christ built. Divisions are explicitly condemned here. 1 Corinthians 1.10, this is the New King James Version again. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians 1.10. He commanded that in the name of Jesus Christ. That's by the authority of Jesus. If it's commanded by the authority of Jesus, we can do it. Can we all speak the same thing? Yes. How? By speaking where the Bible speaks. By making the inspired word of God the final say. We don't vote on things. There are no committees. We don't decide to change laws by a group vote. We can't do that no matter how many people vote on it. God's laws don't change. They've already been written. God is the source. It's perfect. It's authoritative. It's final. We don't vote on these things. We can't. People do. They don't change it. I encourage everyone to look at your Bibles and compare what you're hearing in worship to what God reveals in his inspired word. In fact, that's commanded too. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. That's Acts 17, 10 and 11. So these Jews were hearing the preaching. They were eager to receive it. They wanted it. But then they were going back and looking in the scriptures to see if what they were being taught was aligning with God's inspired word, the authority. They were called more noble for this. We're commanded to do that. Don't take my word for it. Don't take your preacher's word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Not your dad, not your grandma. Don't take their word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Instead, take the word for it, the inspired word of God. That's the authority. If there's conflict between what they are teaching and what you can read yourself in God's inspired word, question them. If they are not willing to change their teachings to align with scriptures, then leave that man-made body, that man-made denomination, leave it behind. It's a division. It's a division from Christ's body. Leave it behind and seek the church that Christ actually founded. A life in Christ is happier. It's healthier. And ultimately, if we live a life in Christ, we get to be with God the Father and bask in his glory forever. Jesus himself, John 14, 6, said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. That's Jesus. That's the only way to get there. As we saw a moment ago in Galatians 3, 27, baptism is how you get into him. We're trying to get to the Father through him. So to get to the Father, we need to go through Christ. And how do we go to Christ? Baptism. Baptism is how you get into Christ. Make sure you do it on his terms. That's immersion for the remission of sins in his name. Make sure you worship on his terms. How do we know what are his terms? Study the Bible. Belief 
is not enough. When it comes to your salvation, belief's not enough. Jesus himself illustrates this here. Matthew 7, 21, English Standard Version. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So here, somebody, he's saying, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. So not everyone who recognizes that Christ is Lord, not everyone who calls him Lord, not everyone who believes that he is Lord is going to enter heaven. But who is well, the one who does the will of the Father? That's Matthew 7, 21. That's who's going to go. Well, this is part of the will of the Father here. This is Mark 16, 15, and 16. This is the Great Commission. This is Jesus himself again. Jesus. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. So Jesus put belief plus baptism before salvation. Jesus. Belief plus baptism equals salvation. At the end of that passage, it says, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Well, if you don't believe, you're not going to be baptized. So not believing is enough to prevent us from obtaining our salvation. So he didn't need to add at the end, whoever does not believe and is not baptized. Not believing is sufficient enough to condemn us. Jesus, belief plus baptism equals salvation. It is my prayer that you will not take what you're being taught spiritually at face value. Be more noble like those Berean Jews we just read about. Look it up. Compare the scriptures to what you're being told is truth. Look at what I'm telling you. Compare it to the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it. Be more noble like the Jews, the Berean Jews. Compare what you're hearing to the scriptures. Why should we compare it to scripture? Because it's truth. John 17, 17. This is the English Standard Version again. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth.